Allow me to call this meeting to order. We welcome you, Honorable Minister, and you for the delays. Um, I'm the Deputy Secretary of Treasury, Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Mr. Lupago is my name. I'm the Economist, Minister of Finance. Mr. Chairman and the colleagues, first of all, good afternoon and happy new year. We haven't seen each other, some of you. I only begin for the interest of time. Can we have a copy of your? of your invitation to this select committee of Parliament on the National Short Security Fund to submit to this August committee the state of affairs and the fund. Regarding the issues raised in your letter of invitation, I wish to respond as follows. One, to examine the corporate and the governance structure of NSSF. Prior to the amendment of the NSSF to introduce in earlier due supervision, I supervise the NSSF under the executive order dated 16th September 204 and a copy is attached to this statement. The NSSF Act was amended in 2022, during the process of amending and reviewing the NSSF Act, His Excellency the President and a letter dated 4th October 2019 did not agree with the proposal to split the oversight mandate of NSSF under the purview of two ministries and also a copy is attached. That notwithstanding, that the August House passed NSSF Amendment Bill 2022 with dual supervisions provisions as follows. Section 3 of the NSSF Amendment minds the Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development with the responsibility of supervising NSSF investments. Section 1U of NSSF Act mandates the Honourable Minister of Gender, Labour and Social Development 
with the responsibility of supervising the social security and administration of NSSF. The board of NSSF comprises of representations from ministries, employees, employers, and, independent, and, and, and an independent chairman and a managing director who is an ex-official of the board. The board conducts its affairs through four board committees, namely the Finance Committee, Investment and Project Monitoring Committee, the Staff and Administration and the Corporate Affairs Committee, and the Audit and Risk Assurance uh, Committee. The fund managing director headed the management team and the executive committee. Two, to examine the circumstances surrounding the appointment of the managing director and the deputy managing director. Since the amendment of the NSSF Act, my honorable colleague, the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, is mandated with the responsibility of appointing the managing director and deputy managing director of the NSSF on the recommendation of the board. I'm aware the board recommended Mr. Richard Yarugaba and Mr. Patrick Oyota, or Ayota for the reappointment of the positions of managing director and deputy managing director respectively. My colleague, the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development has gone ahead to appoint Mr. Patrick Ayota the position of deputy managing director why the appointment, the appointment of Mr. Richard Biarugaba was stayed due to some allegations now which I believe are a subject of investigations by this, uh, uh, by this select committee of parliament. The Inspector General of Government and Auditor General. I welcome the investigations on the allegations and this urge management and the board of NSSF to comply fully and submit all documentation required in this regard to expedite the process to its logical conclusion. Uh, issue number three, to evaluate the status and safety of savers money in the fund. Honorable Chair, management of, of investment at NSSF is based on sound investment policy approved by the sector, by the sector regulator, the Uganda Retirement Benefits Regulatory Authority, UBRA. Currently, the investment portfolio at NSSF has three asset classes. One, fi fixed income, 75, 78%. Two, equities, 15%. Three, real estate, uh, 7%. This is the same portfolio outlay the fund has been managing over the past five years under my supervision. While managing the aforementioned, aforementioned portfolio, emphasis is put, is, is put on due diligence and rigorous uh, processes of assessment of financial and operational proficiency to safeguard, to, 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 to guarantee safe investments, a return on investment to ensure that the fund gives savers a competitive interest rate each year. For the last 10 years, NSSF has been achieving targets by paying its members a decent return of at least 2% above a 10-year inflation average. For the first six months of this financial year, 22-23, NSSF has so far paid out Uganda shilling 720 billion in benefits to its members and still has a net worth of 600 billion for the next, uh, for, for the six months ending December 2022. I'm also informed that contributions for six months ending December 2022 exceeded the contributions for the period in 2021. Accordingly, if all the performance targets are sustained, we expect the fund to end in a decent position this financial year and be able to award its members a decent return. Despite the ongoing investigations, I, despite the ongoing investigations, 
I therefore ask the fund to continue to adhere to sound financial assess ass assessment on all investments in line with investment policy at all times. Item number four, I mean issue number four, to examine the extent of stakeholder engagement in the decision of NSSF. With the due supervision of the fund, I and my colleague, the Honorable Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, take decisions on the recommendation of the board. It is therefore desirable that even with the due supervision as supervisors, we need to consult with each other because we are both critical for the overall success and the sound management of the fund. Honorable Chair and Members, the board is a multi-stakeholder composition and it equally, in it equally widely engages and consults under the various committees before recommendations are made to me in the case of investments. I always welcome an opportunity for consultations because I know that it is critical for the fund to operate uninterrupted so as to mobilize savings for its members, prudently invest those funds, and generate good returns for its members as is envisaged in the law. I appeal to all stakeholders to desist from making statements which may affect the credibility of the fund and in the process of and, and, in, and in the process jeopardize savings savings mobilization and investments and more importantly the returns to, to the members. While I welcome the investigations as stated above, it is regrettable that the negative press reports on the fund, which used to be which used to be there ten years ago, are emerging again. Only eleven months to implementation of the new law. I wish to assure the country that the fund was built on a strong foundation which has made it resilient. The good news of it is that the members of savings are safe and growing. Mr. Chairman and other members, I beg to submit. But I would like that this committee to give you to, uh, to, to refer to a letter from the SNSD president. Uh, it is, as it, there are two, but you have not marked them. There is a, a two-pager, which uh, 4th of October 2019, to the Honorable Speaker of Parliament then, but also there is a one-pager, which is uh, marked B, uh, dated, uh, oh my goodness, I think this was done 2004. I, I would pray that uh, I submit them as a part of what I would like that uh, we debate upon. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Just ask uh, a few. Mm. Honorable Minister, the first question is what is your role in investment at NSSF? The second question, is it in order for the Minister of Gender to do due diligence on an investment? Just hold on. My role in investment. What is your role in investment? Two. Is it in order for the Minister of Gender to do due diligence on an investment? In a letter dated 7th December 2022, the minister asked the board to approve 40 billion investment to the Grain Council. Can I get it in the Minister of Gender? The Minister of Gender in a letter dated 7th December 2022. Wrote to the board chairman mm -hmm. requesting for the MD's commitment to give 40 billion to the Grain Council. 40, 40 billion? Yes, as an investment. Okay. 
since you are in charge of investment, were you informed or did you participate in this decision? In this decision? Yes. I will answer. We have issues on the board composition. We are cough to claims that the current representatives on the board were not actually nominated by the union. The representative of the labor unions? Yes, of the of COFTU. Who are not eligible, I may mean, say eligible, eligible to, to be on the board. Irregularly appointed on the board and petitions were made to you in this regard by the same union. However, the board members from this union were still approved by the Ministry of Finance. So can you share more light? Now, Honorable Honorable Nantongo, Honorable Baka, yes. In your, on your last, on page four, that it is regrettable that the negative press reports on the fund that were there 10 years ago are emerging again. Could you please clarify on what these negative reports were that are coming back? And in your opinion, why do you think they are emerging again at this time? Secondly, on page three, you indicate that um, dual supervision is done by you and the Minister of Gender. Dual supervision of the fund is done by you and the Minister of Gender. Can you confirm to us whether in this supervision you consult each other when it comes to management of the fund? Thank you. And then go back and then on Do you wish for me to repeat? Uh, thanks very much, Chair. Mine would be part B, whereby you are saying you are, you are, you are welcome in this. I'm trying to insinuate that the constituting of this select committee was based on the negative reports, not on facts. To honor the minister, those years of Temanga, NSSF was under your custody. And as we talk now, NSSF has now run title. Do we assume that you remain with it in the ministry in the names of NSSF? Workers' House started. Yes. The second question? I said Temangalo issue. During those period, NSSF was under the custody of Minister of Finance. And NSSF categorically denied they don't have a land title for Temangalo. Should we assume it remained with the Minister of Finance? The third one, Workers' House started during your period. And the same Workers' House has no land title in the names of NSSF. But surprisingly, it has a complete flow of being occupied by somebody who put a caveat, or the lawyers of those who put a caveat on NSSF. Would you explain more on that? The last question. This, this one goes to Mr. Charaib. I'm sorry. Are you here as a board member or you have escorted the minister? 
and should we assume that what was transpired yesterday during the board of NSSF, you are part and partial of it? Thank you. I have a few questions for you. One, Honorable Minister, how has NSSF contributed to the implementation of National Development Plan 3 and the vision 2040. Honorable Minister helped this committee to understand NDP 3 and vision 240. Yes, Honourable Minister, help this committee also understands under what circumstances should NSSF fund activities of NOTU and COFTU. We have UBRA. Honorable Minister, you say the fund is growing adequately but a declining rate. The fund will be to achieve the strategic objective of Uganda shillings 25 trillion by 2025. Honorable Minister, as we speak now, the fund stands at something like 1.7 trillion. 17 trillion, yes. Help this committee understand how you are going to achieve the 25 trillion by 2025. Today, it, uh, this is 2023, we are left with only two, uh, two years at realizing the objective of 25 trillion by 2025. Who funds the activities of UBRA, the regulatory body? Is it NSSA fund? Is it Minister of Finance? Is it Minister of Labor? Or what have you done to make sure that we reduce the administrative cost of this fund? Because this is Savers Fund and we try as much as possible uh, to control the expenditure uh, of this money. Who funds the activities of UBRA under which legal mandate uh, should NSSF continue funding uh, these many uh, entities? Uh, on investment projects, we have understood there are quite a number of projects that uh, stakeholders are not happy with. They have no money value, according to them, and the objectives are, are not very clear. The house project... Kindly, kindly rephrase it and... Mm. Investment projects seem to be lacking in competence. We see contractors signing in a contract. In a few weeks, they abandon the project. The motive of these contractors coming to sign a contract with NSSF under your supervision. How have you been advising NSSF before they undergo under uh, such uh, contractors and memorandum I beg, I beg to submit. Kindly respond to those questions first. Okay. Mm. I operate through the board, which I appoint and uh, which I, I was appointed. And uh, the law allowed me to get one officer from the ministry to go and represent me on the board and be my ears and my eyes. He's here. Is it in order for my colleague to do due diligence on a, an investment? Uh, I 
I need to go through the law, but to me, either the law, even without the law, surely, if you are running a show, you should be able to do diligence, or at least you should be told that this is like this, like this, and raise the question before investment is taken. Again, as we said, for us, we operate with the board. The board is the, our ears, the board is our eyes. If they have any challenge, if they have anything that they want to be clarified about, they come to us. We cannot be the managers. For us, we don't manage ours, is to superintend and give policy decisions how the thing should be run. Minister of Gender on 17th of 12th of last year wrote the board chairman requesting for 46 billion for 40 billion for sort of 40 billion to green to green council did i participate i never participated for composition should you have participated should i have the since it's an investment for sure at least there would have been a cutters to be informed i may not have participated but at least to be informed so that they know. Clarification? The letter being referred to allocating 40 billion to the Great Council in the portfolios of NSSF, that was an investment, proposed investment. The law, even the amended one, places all investments of NSSF the Minister of Finance. So when the Minister says, by Qatar says, should have been informed, wouldn't it have been finance directly to lead the process? And maybe by Qatar says... Since the law is expressed on investment that the Minister of Finance uh, takes lead, I should have been involved for sure, but I was not involved. Even now, I'm hearing this for the first time. I'm hearing this for the first time that we have sent lent money. Can you pass finish this? Supplementary question. Your eyes were seated in that board that went to Kapeka. By the name of the board member, did it attend? And your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the ears and the eyes next to me. <laughs> Those eyes and ears can answer. <laughs> yeah. uh, the truth about the matter is that, um, as you pointed out, the letter was written by the Minister of Theatre to the board chairman. In the workings of the board, it is supposed usually in a matter of investment like this, that the management does the environment scanning to identify viable projects that they analyze under their governing structure of EXCO and they have a management system within the management team that do due diligence, financial evaluation of the projects and also look at the cash flows of such investments for us to uh, be able to um, invest in. Uh, as it is, I think this letter was referred to the management by the, the board, board chairman. chairman who received it. Mm. If I get the facts very clear. Now, the analysis of this, this kind of investments usually then comes through the investment uh, committee of the board, who scrutinizes it, scrutinizes it, and if satisfied, those investments then are passed on to the um, board, full board, for full review again, tear it apart, look at deeper into the aspects before making a recommendation to the Minister of Finance for appropriate consideration. And if the Minister is satisfied, you will sanction it. But I think I need to put it on onset. The NSSF is not a commercial or a development bank. It's members' money. So therefore, any insinuation that 
you recommend that you give the money to an investment. In my view, from the nature of the fund and our investment policy, we don't essentially carry such requirements forward because we are not a commercial bank or a development bank to be lending money to enterprises. Otherwise, uh, we shall not be investing. Just, just a minute. We are aware of what the Grain Council, because the minister told us they had wanted to borrow money. And no one here has talked about borrowing money. But you have talked about no one lends. We don't lend money. So should we assume that they wanted, you are aware of what they wanted and they wanted you to lend them money? I'm not aware, but from the way you phrased the question, the minister wrote to the chairman of the board to give. Huh? That was it. But we didn't talk about lending. Yeah, but, but giving means what? How do you give? Lending at the end of the fund. We talked about investing. Yeah, but the two, the two investment <coughs> portfolios we do, if it's a company like this one, it would be have to be evaluated in the form of equity. And equity investments, we do them through those companies which are listed in the capital markets. So is Grand Council listed in the capital markets in Uganda for us to be able to take up equity in it? I don't know. Mr. Chairman, mm. can I understand? Just, just for, for me. Honorable Minister, let's first uh, no, I, I want discuss to with, the, with your ears yes, and yes. eyes. Then we are no, sir, I want to understand the question. Mm. Are we saying NSSF lent money or was it planning to lend money to the Green Council or that they are going to invest? Because you can buy shares in the, the NSSF could buy shares in the Grady Council. So which is which? The lending or the uh, buying shares in the, the company? The Honorable Minister for Gender told one share it for strategic reasons when you read the letter. Uh, <clears throat> but she had wanted the board chairman to confirm with the MD whether he has finally accepted to commit to give 40 billion to the Grain Council. But during our discussion with her here, she stated that they wanted a final decision or they want to get the money from, if I had her well, Honorable Member, from another source, a bank or something. So for us, our question was simple because we know Minister of Finance is in charge of investment. So under what circumstance is the Minister of Gender now writing to the board and asking the MD to finally give commitment to give 40, 40 billion, billion to the, to the Grain Council without the Ministry's involvement of finance? And it's the supplementary I want to do is there is no way, legal way, that the fund First of all, would lend money to a running company unless this is cleared by the board. And even then, I would need to be informed and give a note that yes, you can buy shares. The lending, like a commercial bank, that I would never allow. I would never allow, allow that. But if they wanted to buy shares in the company, and I'm convinced that the company is a viable company. We can invest there so that we, you know, we expand the, 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 the members' money, and many funds, so that we, at the end of the year we could get a profit. And by the time we, we want to withdraw to sell off our shares, the fund has grown both in terms of annual profits and also in terms of the solid fund. That would be around that. So what, in simple terms, what do you think of this request by the minister? I don't know. Shall I say irregular? I think it was irregular in my view. Either the law was not well understood or was ill-advised. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. He does do because to my best of my understanding, they did not go there once. Chairman, 
board members, I assume all of you went to minister, and you are hearing, are you hearing it for the first time? I'm not aware. Katrick? Or am I losing the letter even? No. Okay. You can respond to the other questions, Honorable Minister. Okay. <clears throat> the board composition. The representatives of COFTU. And uh, pull your microphone a bit lower. The representatives of COFTU were not eligible and they were regularly appointed to the board. That's a, a legal provision. I can't, I can't really get an answer. Maybe I can ask my, my eyes, ears, and ears to tell me. Then it goes on petitions given to me, and yet the, the members were appointed. There was a petition, in other words, which was given to me that these people were not suitable to be appointed on the board. Uh, and then, yet again, they went, they went they, they, somebody appointed them. You, you. That I, I appointed them. Uh, I would need to go and check the records, to be honest with you. I cannot give you a straightforward answer because I need to go and refresh my memory how, whether, how the, the letter that they sent to me submitting those names. Ah, can I have a look at it? This was on the 3rd of September. Colleagues, I, 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 I need to, to check my record at the office. I cannot answer off cuff. Uh, if you want, I can even come back tomorrow if it pleases you and when I dig out the information. Because this, even, even this letter itself, I can see. Minister of Finance, we received it on the 3rd of September. Uh, I beg uh, well, your intelligence that you allow me yeah. to go and check. Can we allow him to come tomorrow at 9 with that clarification? Yes. Yeah. No problem at all. And the supporting documents? The, 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 the but would you mind also getting me a photocopy so that it can remind me? <laughs> Ask the secretary to give me a photocopy. So you come with all the appointment letters for the all, all for all the board members. Yes, please. <coughs> Most of largest. Now, negative comments emerging up. You know, in the field of money, money does not want noise. <laughs> I, um, money does hate noise. Once you make a noise, money will try to run away. So when we start getting irregular, no, sorry, to talk, when we issue statements which are acting negatively on the institution, many people will shine away. Uh, so th th that is for the truth. That's why I'm talking that <laughs> if we want to criticize, we should criticize indoor as far as the fan is concerned. In my view, many my experience has shown me that. Your management, are you consulted in the supervision? Well, as I said, I have my eyes there. Uh, originally, I am the one who appointed or suggested the appointment of the MD. So, if 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 I, if, if I don't act as I should act, then I would blame my eyes and ears. <laughs> but he is here. This dual management, uh, in the real dual management, I really don't know. I don't want to open a Pandora box. But uh, me, right from the word go, colleagues, I was not. Uh, persuaded that this dual thing would work very well.
First of all, the president had made it very clear in his letter. If you look at the letter, the one here. There is the letter of 4th October, he says, for, uh, 2019. Confirmation of my decision to transfer the NSS from the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development to the Minister of Finance and Planning and Economic Development. He says, I do not agree with the proposal in the NSSF Amendment B of 2019 to split the oversight mandate of the NSSF under two government agencies, where the management of the fund would be under the, the purview of the Minister responsible for finance and the policy matters of the NSSF under the Minister of Labor, Gender and Social Development. The proposed arrangement would cause delays in decision making and create loopholes for corruption. That is the president speaking. So, uh, but I was defeated. Uh, I tried to argue this matter. Those of you who are there when this law was being debated here in the House, but uh, I could not succeed. So, the majority carried the day, and I said, okay, fine, let's give it an experience, experiment. And from what I'm seeing, that experience doesn't be very favorable, in my view. Uh, was the committee selected because of negative statements? No, I don't think the committee was select, was, committee, uh, was put by because of negative statements. It was, I think, in my view, it, it was uh, uh, put up to, to, to find out the, the, the problems so that the, the, the institution can be uh, can can be can 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 can, be, can, run, can run much better. Temangaro, the issue of NSF NSSF says no title. I get my eyes here. We do, we do have to because I'm not sure whether I I only knew there was some little disagreement with somebody who had long I think had a particular interest in that land. That was all. That's the only thing, but I did not, uh, I did not, uh, not see the title. No, I did not see the title. But neither was there at that time. We were talking about the title. There was a disagreement uh, of some with, between the NSSF together with the, some neighboring, either neighboring or something, who said they also owned part of that land. Workers' house has no title. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, my eyes and ears, you answer that question. <laughs> because me, it, it was brought to me, the, the project was brought to me for sure, to be honest with you. Uh, we looked at it, it looked viable, it, it, the, the, the plot is central, uh, the amount of money, they showed me the cash flows and so forth, like the Roboa State. If those of you have been the lower uh, state. Actually, uh, <coughs> Honorable Minister, the Temangalo land titles are, in, are still in the names of Amos and Zay. Yes, they are still in the names of Amos and Zay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't count yourself to be an owner when you don't have the titles. Mm. So really the fire I must thought you are the one who paid for this land. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Did the ministry participate in paying for this land? Not my, not, not my, not, not my recollection. But you give the no objection. Please, please. I think the issue of Temangalo, the there were legal back and forth, which I think have continued for some time now, and um, I would like then that um, you allow us time. If the company secretary yesterday, or when you met management did not um, promise to give the update on this. I need to consult the custodian of board matters. But I know there was a long drawn battle of um, transfer of titles uh, between Amos Inzei and um, NSSF. Some portions of Jemagal actually have got land titles under the names of NSSF. But did you pay for this land? NSSF paid with, for that land. Using savers money. And up to now you don't have possession of this of this land? As I said, let's get confirmation from the company records 
so that um, we talk from a point of um, uh, concrete information. But what I know is that some sections of the Temangalo land certainly have title. Some portions are the ones which may be subject of um, clarification. That, um, that debate. Clarification. Uh, you are in, when you issue money to invest in properties using savers' money. Do you follow up on these investments, or do you just stop at paying the money and you do not follow up? We put our reports to the IPMC committee and to the board, giving updates of how far we have gone with respect to these investments. After so, so do you have reports in relation to this land? For sure, the reports are there. As Please. I said, let's get the, the reports from the records of the board meetings. We shall get the actual position. And what I know is that with respect to Temangalo, on the areas where the titles were fully secured, we have already got um, a project going on there for housing of various categories, and the investments are going on. So let's get the facts from the company records, and we should be able to submit the committee as well, um, perhaps in the course of tomorrow. Can we let them first submit those? They are coming tomorrow. Yes. And who does it and how do you do it? Because, like, oh, you authorized money before understanding the, the business in details. It is a one we do that due diligence. We don't only remain on due diligence, but we go further to do the financial analysis of what kind of investments can give us a better return for the money that we're going to invest in that area. And we do it with market, market studies, we do it with the financial modeling, financial forecasting, and we also arrive at a decent return. If all those not tick those boxes, we certainly do not um, carry out that investment. Is it a matter of taking that boxes, the due diligence, the, the check? The is that yes, the criteria has been met, and you do it with a financial calculation that indicates that if we put workers' money there, the return on the basis of these assumptions is going to be this one. Therefore, it's better to invest in this area and not the other area, and we expect to get this return over this period of time. All that is informed by professional assessment, which is normally done by management before they come to IPMC. IPMC equally does the same uh, rigorous exercise of assessment, and we say take the same to the board. The board equally using their constituencies, who I know have capacities in most of these areas to cross-check before we make a recommendation to the minister. It's a very detailed process that we go through. Yes, it is a detailed process in being there are quite a number of gaps. The issue of Nachigara, for example, uh, was approved, the, the budget money was budgeted, and later the minister came in, and I'm wondering how a, a competent company that goes into serious due diligence can go ahead to plan budget for such kind of projects, and yet they know that the land title has issues, the Nachigara in particular, and Nachi, the 40 Nachi. only land in Inaguru. Nachigara. Those two instances. Can How? you respond, yes. Yes. Mr. Patrick, before you respond? Mm. You ask Honorable Baka yeah. and he responds at Chair, Chair, I'm sorry. I'm... And you are the ears of the minister. And the entire business was under the Ministry of Finance. We are talking of more than 10 years for the Mangalo and Workers' House. No land titles in the names of NSSA. And you will see that you get retainers. You are supposed to be the one controlling the management where they are missing. How can we be sure that these land titles, or the land pieces of land, for, for instance, the manga, four pieces of land are still in the names of Amos Zay, and we are quiet. When you come to workers' house, Alcon, which is an American Swiss company, dealing with scale of the eyes, moreover, not construction, is having our land title. And the board is keeping quiet. But even though there is a caveat, the land title is still in the names of Alcon. Can we be cognizant yes. of time and you ask a question and they respond? Yeah, let me answer on Nachigalala. Nachigalala 
came as a proposal from um, management, land bank, for future investments. And it came to IPMC, we reviewed it, we made serious observations on three areas. Number one, there are parts which are still encumbered, um, there are squatters, number two, and number three, we recommended then to the full board that management goes back to negotiate with the vendor and the vendor should secure a vacant possession of the entire area for Nachigalala land before they come back to the IPMC, through IPMC to the board. And that's exactly the position of the board. And I think um, I, I request also that um, we get those, uh, that evidence, that, that investment was not approved by the board, not even by IPMC. I chaired that meeting very clearly, and I know the conditions we gave management to undertake before, 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 let me finish so that I, I finish my proposition, before coming back to IPMC. Number one, the vendor must take back and possession of the entire area because we noticed encumbrances. Number two, the land must be valued by the government value. I mean, we had our independent value, that was for the flow price or determination of the actual value of that place. Number three, then the board, I mean, the management was supposed to do a thorough analysis, complete with the plan on which to apply that land for investments under NSSF. Made also nomination from IPMC to the full board. The full board has got records of the recommendations they gave back to management. That investment was not approved by IPMC, and neither was it approved by the board. And the minutes are there. Yeah, but Chair, I'm sorry to have that. Chair, Chair, I'm sorry. I'm informed in the morning that before any figure goes to the minister, it passes through the whole channels of the board. For instance, the minister refused the one million dollar to construct the judicial house. That means the management, the finance committee, and the board had already approved. The minister rejected, and I praised her for that. The minister stopped the 400 billion for buying Nachigara. How did the management or a few people jump to the minister if they had not passed through the channels? But the fact is, the board and IPMC and the board do not approve the budgets of land for Nachigalala. Now, let me answer the. Sorry. Let's have the same members. I am not comfortable. Chair, I am not comfortable the way we. About investments which are under the purview of the Minister of Finance. Okay? Are you saying you are not aware of the budget of NSSF for 2022-2023 that was submitted to the Minister for approval? which included 400 billion to purchase the Nakikara land. As I told you, I deal with investments. I've told you a position of the decisions that the committee recommended the full board, and the full board rejected and referred the matter back to management. I think as to whether I saw the figure of 400 billion for Najigalala in the budget for that financial year, I think the budget numbers as presented by management through the finance committee to the full board, if the minister of finance didn't did not even approve that amount of money. At that amount of investment, that, that, that investment, then how does the figure come into the budget? I think I put the Maybe question back to Maybe what you can do for us, for us, all investments the Ministry of Finance has approved. So we can make our own comparison. Yeah. Oh, that's good. You are I'll coming tomorrow, so I'm sure you are coming with this. Okay. Honorable Mos. Yes, my name.
How has NSSF contributed to the NDP3 and what, to what extent should the fund contribute to the activities of NOTU and COF2? Now, I think the fund has done a tremendous contribution to the, to the, to the, to the economy by one, developing properties which add to the, to the GDP of the country and, uh, sorry, yes, yes, we mobilize savings. You know, when you mobilize savings, you invest those savings, there is a ripple, a ripple effect in the economy. To what extent should the fund contribute to the activities of NOTU and COF2? Uh, this should be, I think, a legal question. Uh, somebody who is conversant with the law can let me know. Should the fund fund the NOTU and COF2 activities? I don't know. Maybe Patrick, you could help me because I'm not, I'm not sure whether that there is in the law there is a provision that cof2 and and no 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 <laughs> no two can move can walk into the fund and ask money for for, for running the activities so that's the legal question that the, the people Since who are the a board member why don't you, why doesn't he respond to that and we move i think the only way money can come out of the fund to any institution is through either participation in corporate social responsibility. They want to change now to corporate social investments. So that um, when there's a program to participate and partner, and the skills in that institution are required, I think that's the only avenue where money can get out from the fund, not any other avenue like... Uh, Father but you know, further clarification, Mr. Yes. Patrick, Yes. we have a letter uh, signed by the Secretary General, 400 million. However, he had already received 100 million, and uh, part of it was for buying systems, uh, corporate social, been doing these things. And they say you even signed them more use to give them this money. No, what you have just described would be a partnership, but you would not send money to their account mm. for them to run it themselves. But this is what is happening. Mm. And we have a board member here who seems not to understand how it is happening. We have this. I think the, the sending money directly to individuals is regular in financial money. But what I knew, of course, when you approve a budget at a broader level, I think it's not this question now must go direct to management. Um, we approve under the corporate social responsibility arrangement where a partnership is clearly defined with a clear work plan of what is supposed to be done. Like we also authorized them to do when, when COVID struck, we contributed to uh, masks and some other protective gear. But you don't give them money. We don't give them money. To their account. We, we procure the items or get people who are competent to buy the items. That's why we send the money. So that's the arrangement that I know as a board member and the the minister, and as also a financial manager in my own right. Yeah. So if then management went outside that, yeah. that's irregular. I can say it with a no, no fear of contradiction. I don't know who audits us, because the auditors should be pointing these things out. I don't know, maybe the auditor the general is overwhelmed. Uh, I have never seen lately the audit report. Uh, because all of these things, if there is really a, a, an audit, a yearly audit, they should have come. This land in Nachigarada, I heard about it some five, four years ago. At State House, somebody came, I think it was Madivani, says, me, I'm sending my land in Nachigarada there. Yes, uh, then we said, surely, 
you are selling that land, is it yours? Then we instructed the NSS of said, go and do due diligence. If, if the land is free of encumbrances, come back to us, and then we take a decision. Now I'm hearing it here now, four years down the road. <laughs> One simple question, Honorable Minister. Yes. One can, simple can, question. Can, can he finish the question? Let him finish the question, yes. <laughs> Growth of the fund. The fund is growing, there's no question about that. I think there is a write-up, you can, uh, we, sh we should show you how it, is, it has been growing. Who funds the activities of Ubra, and under which law? Ubra earn their own money. From where? Ah, they get fees. Yes. I don't, the, 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 the treasurer does not fund them. Indeed, then, in fact, I expect them to give, to, 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 to pay taxes. Oh, yes. If they make money, they should pay taxes. Unless uh, the law is against that. Just, just to give some information. Ubra is a government entity and it gets money from the government. It actually comes to us, the finance committee, and we approve their budget. So the minister could perhaps be confusing it with another Ubra. So that's the information I thought I should give. Mm. Before the new law, when His Excellency the President, what do you stop Ubra from using that money from the fund? Have you ever read that letter? I've seen and that later. You stop if you are not being funded by the fund. Why didn't what they want? Why did he write that later if there was nothing of that nature? Who, the president? Honorable yeah. uh, Minister, Ubra, Ubra was, taking, was taking six billion from the fund uh, as fees, I think supervisory fees, regulatory fees, six billion levy per year. If I am not mistaken, mm. your, your eyes and ears knows better. Uh, let me let me certainly so. The the issue of Ubra Ubra financing is in the Ubra law. They are supposed to levy fees and other sources of income as goes on. But under the fees, when regulations were drawn to operationalize that law, uh, among the fees which Ubra was collecting from the regulated institutions. NSSF inclusive was a certain proportion of about 0.02 percent yeah. of the asset holding of the regulated entity. NSSF, because was growing, was uh, the, the amount of contributions was quite, uh, quite becoming heavy uh, because of their growth. So, uh, in the processing of this new amendment law, uh, a protest was made by some. Um, some, some, some constituencies that the NSSF should stop collecting this levy from, I mean, the OBRA should stop collecting this levy from NSSF, and the President agreed to that and therefore wrote a letter to you to instruct you to stop, I mean, NSSF from remitting this levy uh, to OBRA and instead provide the equivalent amount of money through the budget to help Ubra run the regulatory um, activities. And that's what's happening now. So Parliament appropriates uh, the budget to Ubra, but I think uh, they, are, they continue collecting from other, other schemes. Other yeah, yeah, 63 schemes. So that, the, the combination with the two are the source of money for Ubra. We need that oh. The President's letter? Yeah. Yes, however, the, it has been implemented. The law, the law was passed by this parliament on that levy, and even the president's letter is not sufficient enough. They must come and amend. They must come and amend that law. Otherwise, uh, even what is happening would also be irregular. But uh, respond to the other question. Okay, thank you for now. Investment projects having no value for money. I am not uh, privy to that. Maybe you, my eyes here can. <laughs> Even investment projects that have, have no value for money? I that would, question I, was raised. But I yeah. would like to have. Uh, take take those the two. Yes yeah. or on. They said, How have you guided? That's a very important question. Why, how have you guided? I have guided in as far as when I have been given information or I've been given a, a request. 
I prefer myself, my management style. I give somebody full play until he or she proves that he's incompetent, then we discuss other matters. I don't want to poke my nose. These are very well-educated people. They are well-seasoned. Uh, they should come. If they have a challenge, they come. Or if I suspect something, I can summon them. But to really ping poking your to your to your eyes and ears and whatnot, I, I think is good to me is not good management. So if the fellow does not perform, the best thing is you lose then you you lose the time and then put in on anyone who can be able to do the job very well. Because the amount of work we do, it's not possible. It's not possible that I can trace all the activities. Me, I, I depend on reports. If reports they come very good. Then at the end of the year, if there is anything wrong, I send my auditors, my auditors will investigate, and then find if something is wrong, then they will bring it to my attention, and I take action. Thank you. Uh, Chair, thank you. Where there was a disagreement between the former MD, Mr. Biarugaba, and the Minister of Gender, in regard to instructions that were given to him and he was defying. Particularly about the six billion. And if I read verbatim, the matter ended with a meeting chaired by the Honorable Matia Kasaija with the MD, the Minister of State for Finance, Honorable Mr. Sisi, Ubra officials, and it goes on, including the Minister of Gender and so on, that they should release the six billion, which the former MD was not agreeing to. Do you recall this, and what was the issue around the six billion? That's the first question. The second question, in your statement, you submitted and said, under the examination of the corporate governance structure of NSSF, referring to the letter confirming the decision of His Excellency about the transfer of NSSF from Minister of Gender to the Minister of Finance. And you have reiterated and said that the, uh, His Excellency said, I do not agree with the proposal the amendment of the bill to, try to have a duo supervision. supervision. And in your concluding remarks, you said there had been, everything had been okay in regard to issues being reported in the media for the last 10 years until recently. Are you suggesting that there are gaps and issues that are going to compromise the performance of the fund because of the dual supervision. What is your opinion? I repeat, no, sir. Honorable Minister, can we have the risk management strategy or plan you have concerning risk management strategy or plan that you could have in place concerning uh, the investments of NSSF? Yes, we know the 78% is safe because it has the sovereign uh, guarantee, but I'm looking majorly at the real estate, the 7% and the 15% in equity. Perhaps you could highlight more on that. Two, it concerns the allegations against the former managing director. Had you ever heard of any issue before or you, it came out when uh, the issue of his reappointment arose? Because if perhaps it could have come up earlier, most of these things are implicating some of, uh, I think, your members. So perhaps you can you, you can give more light on that as well. Then uh, the the, MDA, oh, the board member, I think, he claimed not to have uh, information about the meeting in Kapeka, but I thought you could highlight more on that because uh, it has a lot of information. I don't, you were you were you there or not? Because your members claimed you went as to get... the Green Council. Okay. Uh, I didn't attend that one. But I attended only one recently when 
when we had a, a meeting with the General Sally in Kapeka. Yes, it's the yeah. meeting we were talking about. So you were part of that meeting? I was there. You were there. Okay, you'll, you'll still highlight for us on what you discussed. Because according to that meeting, mm. one of the issues that was discussed was that of the Crane Council. And you seem not to have, according to the letter we have, it was, it was one of the issues that was, and, and you're claiming not to know anything about the, the issue of the Crane Council. So. <coughs> And last, perhaps you could uh, highlight more on how the interest that the server has earned is computed. I think, yeah, some people are interested in doing that as well. Honorable Gaffa, any question? You are the last. Honorable Kakim. <laughs> Just one question, Honorable Kakim. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Minister. How is the suspend account for the NSSF money so that this account has been mismanaged? Suspense the account. The okay. Suspense account. Suspense account, yes. What are the acceptable levels of fund that should be on this account? Thank you. Actually, in that regard, since we have the chairman of the IPMC, five billion on the savers fund. There was also another case that was reported to the same committee you chair of 150 billion regarding that same suspense fund uh, the honorable member honorable kakembo is referring to there was also a variation of uh, the pension tower from 20 billion apparently alleged to 410 billion and you are still the same person chair there was also an issue on Yusuf Lule Road, that plot, and it forced even the PPDA to intervene. So how much did you lose in that Yusuf Lule procurement? Because apparently, uh, people overvalued it to make commission, and the PPDA had to come in to make investigations. So just give us more light on that matter. Kindly respond to the last questions, but we are with you tomorrow morning. Fund contribute the activities of NOTU and COP2. That was the thing we have finished. Now, ah, growth of the fund, that also was finished. Then the figures are available. The who fund the activities of Ubra, that also has been understood. Under, investment projects having no value for money, that's also finished. How have you guided? Then actually, the, well, actually now I've finished, let me see. Have I got it? Ah, no, it is here. The, the risk management plan. Again, I think Patrick should answer that one. Any, any issue with the former MD? I had no issue with the former MD. He always consulted me if he thought there was uh, something that he could not be able to, to go over or something illegal. I, had, I've, I have had with me, he has been with me for, I think, it has ten, 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 close 10 years. I, I really had never had it. Maybe what the Honorable Member wanted to know is, mm. how come you have managed this fund for over, we have not had suckers until when the Ministry of Gender is now doing duo management. Have you been doing a terrible job? No, me, as far as I'm concerned, we have been having a very excellent working relationship. When he would receive challenge, the MD or, or the chairman for that matter, they would come to me. If I felt there was something that I did not understand, I would summon them, they would come and explain, being led by by Patrick here, really, really for all purposes, I had no, uh, no issue uh, of substance that really is worth mentioning here with Richard. Mm. Uh, that answered them. One, I disagreed in the principle because my understanding it's like, for example, I have been running the show as Minister of Finance. I'm short of money for sure, but I will never ask you the fund to give me money. 
because those are not funds for public expenditure. Yes. If, 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 if I want money, then I go to my treasury. But uh, an independent institution maybe, with its maybe, owners... Honorable Minister, use the exact words. A, a ministry, this ministry, this person, what? But don't just use independent institution. Are you referring to the Ministry of Gender? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the, 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 the fund. The use, the, the use of the use, the, the, the usage of the funds of the fund. I hope you understand me. Yes. I could not, and let me, I could not ask NSSF to give money to run the affairs of the of, of government. If anything, I think that they would, who could, maybe you could ask me, but I wouldn't say also I wouldn't give you because you have got your own money. So you, you prepare your budget, you so present so it. So who asked for the money? That, that the six billion. Yes, it is not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had it. Minister, I had it somewhere. Minister, <laughs> Minister, you said you disagreed. You, in you the disagreed. In the meeting, I disagreed. You disagreed with in who? In principle, with who? <laughs> with my colleague, the minister. Oh, I, Minister of Gender. So, in principle, it was irregular. Honorable Minister, was it irregular for the Minister to ask for the six billion? I think I am repeating, really to me, it is irregular because a ministry that is supervising that body should not ask for money to run the affairs of the ministry, even if it is that those affairs are related to the fund. They should request money from the Treasury, we give them the money for Treasury, and then, because this, 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 this money is not our money. Please, this, let's be very clear. Yeah. This money is workers' money. The best if I was having, a, if, if the law allowed me to tax, then I would tax them. <laughs> but the law doesn't allow me to tax them. But for you really, as a minister, with your full budget, to start going to say, you institutions, A and B and C, even if these other prestatory bodies, we, we never, do we ever ask them to give us money? Never. Never. Yeah. Instead, at times, it is we who give them, if they have some activity which they, we feel that they cannot fully fund, we, we, we are budget money to give them the money, but not the other way around. So, so really. Before you leave that matter, digit, and uh, your ears and eyes are on, is on the board that approved the budget. Maybe he can give us more light. Maybe. The money was not approved by the board. In my understanding, it was um, the minister's reaction to the budget was submitted to her, where she proposed that she, out of that budget, be given the money. But not that the, the money was approved in the budget, inclusive of the money being gendered. Never. It's irregular, as the minister said. So, the six billion was not part of the budget you approved as the board of NSSF? It was not. We sent a budget to her to approve. In considering approval of the budget, that's why she gave that counter proposal that we pick from here. She said you remove from where and put here. I, 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 don't, I don't have the. You will have her later. I don't have to paraphrase her later. That time you have never considered the approval of that money. We have never considered up approval of money. And I made my point very clear when I when the matter came to the board. From the treasure where I sit. Okay. I will not approve that money. It's regular. Honorable Minister, please proceed. On, the, on that matter you leave it the, the way it is. Sorry, how is the interest com computed? Uh, Patrick, you can answer that one. The, the, these members want to know how we compute interest. Uh, what I would say is how the fund has performed. If 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 we, after our budget, sorry, after our balance sheet, if we see that we have made a lot of money uh, in the process of the year, then uh, we, we 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 think that we should now credit our our bosses who are the savers. Uh, but the formula, I, I don't know very well. You can, you can, you can tell the committee. Now, suspense account. How much should it contain? 
Again, me, this suspense account, I don't understand why there should be a suspense account in the first place, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why there should be a suspense account. It, it's a running, you, you create a suspense account when, the, when there is a, a crisis. But if there is no crisis, there is no need to of a suspense account because you go as per budget. If you run short of money in the course of running the year, then you go back to the board and say, by the way, there is an activity here which we think we should, can we revise the budget? Then the budget is revised. Over to you, Father. Uh, thank you very much. Honorable issues around um, computation of the interest rate. Uh, we have the formula. It's really income minus expenses plus adjustment for inflation. A 10 year average inflation is what we compute and then uh, pay the members. But I think, let me have a chair. Do you compute on the basis of the year ended June the, the balance of the savings, the savings as per the previous year? Uh, the law is very clear on that. I know you know. But it's on uh, the basis of the, the, the savings of the, the, the year before. Previous year. That's what the law says. No, but it's asking you. Do you? I think if I understand well. Do you follow the financial year of the government of Uganda or the calendar year? We follow first of all the financial year of the government of Uganda, but not the financial year just ended. It's a financial year previous the one just ended, yes of the previous balance at that time. Maybe but you can bring that says. formula on paper. Let tomorrow. me bring the formula so that we share the formula. It's a better way for us to to be communicating to each other. Uh, I want to also request that um, we uh, bring the issue about um, the suspense account and explanations, because usually in operation of the fund, there may be some uh, deposit there to the, to the account of the fund, which are not accompanied by, it used to be a lot in the previous years, but since the management improved the, and the board improved the, uh, the accountability systems, we now get information to real time of the contributors to the fund. But in the past, the reconciliation between who has contributed how much this month and the amount on the, the fund always used to take time. And that kept the suspense account growing, but it has since reduced tremendously. I think we shall give you the details about the suspense account, the status of what it is. All the accounts. All the accounts, all the accounts here, operations. We shall uh, allow to ask management to uh, work overnight and get this information so that I submit in the morning. And then the fraud of uh, 2018, 2019. It was all 2019, the yeah, 3.5 billion yeah. on exempted benefits yeah. and, the, yeah. and the 150 million mm. on the suspense account. Yeah. Uh, all that uh, I'll be able to give you. But are you well, aware of it? Um, it, it came to the, through the risk committee and then um, it's combined risk and um, finance committee. It came to the board, and the board um, uh, took decisions and approved the actions that management had done at that time to nip in the bud the culprits of that. Did you recover the money? Uh, the recovery process is ongoing, and I think, uh, let me give you the information also tomorrow uh, with respect to that, because it's all in the records of the board and um, management. I, I don't want to second guess some of these things because they are on record. Um, the cost escalation. I think this also, let me give it to you tomorrow, but it, it, it did come through management on account of contract execution and the changes that occurred uh, in the construction and the variations that were actually cleared through the board. And we went, of course, to the uh, Solicitor General, Attorney General, to clear them. Uh, we shall give you all this narration as well. But the challenge with that, uh, luckily enough, you're in finance. Yeah. You cannot have a variation of more than 25%. No. From 20 billion to 410 billion, it is really unbelievable. That's and some people mean. use this uh, fraud. They, they mm. put smaller bids mm. Mm. to win the bid, but from 20 billion to 410, um, this is unbelievable. Chair, we shall also give you the facts. I don't think it was 20 billion, but let me give you the facts so that. Um, I operate from the board documents. Um, Tomorrow? Good, yeah, we shall come back with the uh, true facts because um, that variation is not possible to have happened in the pension towers. Uh, Yusuf Lule, how much did we lose? 
it's also a subject of the board decision. Let me go and attract that also today. So in short, let me get all these details and then I submit a comprehensive statement. I'll work with the company secretary and the management to compile all this because all records of the board are kept by the company secretary. So to dig this out uh, is going to take um, us the whole night tonight. And I promise to give you the... Any other document you would want Minister of Finance to come with tomorrow? Yes, Honorable Gaffer. The Chair. The Managing Director is under investigation. Heads the management team and the executive committee. Then, uh, uh, I notice that the minister appointed paragraph 2, 1, 2, sub paragraph 3. My colleague, the minister of gender, appointed Mr. Patrick Kayota to the position of deputy managing director. And why the appointment of Mr. Richard Viargaba was stayed due to some allegations. So uh, my question, Chair, to the Honorable Minister, it might not be his, but I just uh, wanted to seek his opinion as a joint supervisor. Um, management teams are teams. It's not unilateral decision making. So the board would be working as a team also. So would it be right to appoint one party of the management team, suspend the other arm, and then make the new arm in acting capacity because I think that if there are any uncleanness they would be touching mostly both the MD and the deputy so it appears to me regularly I, I was seeking your opinion as a seasoned minister this is the last question no the other one is a subordinate. You cannot assume and say both of them either have carried out an action in the joint, except unless it is related to some specific duty. So each one of them should be making his accountability. I wouldn't really, going for my knowledge about management that uh, you, you, sub, you, 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 you assume the junior officer either was uh, compliant or succumbed to the pushes of the, 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 the top man. The only thing that you can hold him or count for, why didn't you say so? If, if you saw your boss doing something wrong, why didn't you say so? So really, I think we, we, we shouldn't mix the, the two together. Mm. Okay. We need uh, <coughs> also the investment policy. We need a database of all land titles, because now we may need to do a search in the custody of NSSF. Otherwise, we thank you for your time, Honorable Minister. Just before you, I, I want to put my prayer. Mm. Mr. Chairman and the colleagues, uh, tomorrow I have a heavy schedule involving many people. I wanted to pray indulgence if you think it is right that uh, these eyes and uh, ears are here. Most of the issues they could answer them so that tomorrow you excuse me and I go and carry those other responsibilities which are very crucial. Time. These are very serious matters. So what is the convenient time for you to appear tomorrow?
We are here to work and we shall wait. What is the convenient time? Uh, can we convene tomorrow at 2? Yes. I will have finished the water I'm supposed to in the morning. We are going to shed you for 3 to give you enough time to prepare. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we thank you for your time and we wish you a good evening. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. the record, can we have introductions from our guests? Microphone. Members of the committee. My names are Richard Patrick Biarudala. Currently unemployed. Okay. <clears> Honorable <throat> the former managing director, uh, personal circumstances, he availed to us. We would need to give you the opportune time, enough time to make a very thorough presentation, clarify on various issues, guidance, first of all from the honorable members on how they would wish to proceed. Should you wish we proceed, we will the former ED has finished his presentation and we ask the necessary questions. Because I think we should give the courtesy to the MD to first uh, Honor, yes, Honor Bamos. Thank you, Chair. Uh, truth, we have engaged a lot the whole day. But cognizant of the fact that Sabia uh, Rugaba has waited also, I would like to propose that he submits and we do tomorrow. Because we have a lot that we need to share with him. Have you seen the presentation, Honorable? I have seen the documents. Sure. I don't know, he says it's not a lot. But I can see a lot of documents. And that's why I was thinking that if he submitted, would be having an opportunity to read over that and then be able to have enough questions for him tomorrow. Uh, Chair, I will defer from my colleague. I think since it's almost six, we can push this meeting to tomorrow morning because up to you and the members to decide. Perhaps we could be up to nine ten because most of us have many issues since it's the main Okay. Month. Honorable Nantongo, then Honorable Bakavulinde, and Honorable Gafalas. Uh, Chair, because looking at the volume of presentation and honestly speaking, we are all human. Right now, we may be worn out, and our witness is a key witness in this investigation. I'd propose that he leaves us with the presentation. We take the night to go through so that when we meet him tomorrow morning, it's a quick process, and we're already prepared to pose our questions after his presentation. Thank you. 
Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, in support of my colleagues, we are lucky that the Minister of Finance stated his time from nine. I'm of the view, just to amend their proposal. I'm of the view, just to amend on their proposal, that instead, within 10 minutes, you are highlight the allegations against you. So that when he comes tomorrow at 9, in addition to what you, you, you already knew, he can be in position to defend himself. Because each group we have been meeting is something we are discovering. And I do think that you have the capacity to summarize some allegations to him, then he goes, with all his files, then in the morning we start. Things are fresh when the minds are fresh. Last uh, critical and for the whole country. Uh, Chair, we are in the parliament and sometimes we live even in plenary at 8 p.m. But uh, because we need the fresh minds to comprehend the, the witnesses' presentations, and the discussions, I would agree with the colleagues that we, we let him present and then you summarize for him issues that you need to respond to, then we go, additional issues that he needs to respond to, then we go and come back tomorrow morning now for uh, detailed discussions on his presentation. Clarification. Uh, I the colleague Gaffa who has just submitted, we seem to be on the same page, but we need uh, clarification. Presentation, you mean to give us the documents, like admitting documents that he wants to pre present and then he goes, and then he presents to Mr. Biarugawa, are you aware of the allegations in the Honorable Minister's letter? Microphone? Uh, yes, yes, uh, also saw it like you saw it on social media um, and um, I have not had any communication from um, from the board about it at all um, I have not been given an opportunity to even respond to them and um, if you really want to know I really feel awful because a lot of the allegations especially the ones that touch on me personally like corruption there is no evidence uh, to show um, to show uh, these allegations I mean uh, how wild can this be that I received 5% of a contract value on um, pension towers and I wired the money through uh, Barclays sorry, um, a bank in Mauritius and in Barclays that I... Are you now responding to the allegations? I am looking at the allegations because you asked me to, to note the allegations. Would you be interested in preparing a defense to these allegations? A hearing. And mm. unfortunately for me, as I said, these have not been presented to me. I have just seen it. You know, this letter was written on the 7th of December. By then, I was no longer in employment, so I wasn't a member of the board. I also saw it on social media, and that's where I got the print off from, from social media. And there's all these allegations about me. They have not been presented to me. They are very wild. There is no evidence. It's, it's just like somebody walking into a bar and basically saying, you took three billion shillings of a kickback, right? You sold a plot in Barara belonging to the fund and exchanged money. You used uh, the services of Symbion, I didn't. You, and, and so on and so forth. I mean, it's, they are very unfair. And the IGG, who is meant to investigate this, hasn't even been in touch with me. So I have heard about allegations, I have heard about investigations. Mm. Nobody, this is my first encounter anywhere in the world about my employment at NSSF. So if any of you were me, 
you would feel really bad. In fact, I call myself a victim. I know the Honorable Minister and the fund have tried to portray me as a villain. And to be quite frank, I am a victim and I feel really bad. I will tell you that I try to be very strong with this thing, but on Saturday, there was a capital gang where a one Richard Otua, who I believe came to this committee, made horrible allegations, and I broke down and cried for the very first time. Because I felt that, why am I being subjected to this when I have done a good job? I was going to start off by showing you how much work we have done with the team over the last 10 years. I was going to demonstrate to you in my presentation that the fund has never done like this since it was started, that we have had audits of the IGG, six of them, including on my person, uh, finances, uh, i.e. on my assets declared, and also my bank accounts. That investigation was done by the IGG about two years ago. That we've had IGG investigations of other places. We've had the Auditor General issue unqualified audits for the last 10 years that have been there. That the PPDA has done audits on all our procurements for the last 10 years and we have turned out to be the best performing entity. These records are available. We have had over 30 companies in Uganda and outside of Uganda coming to NSSF to benchmark on our best practices that we've introduced. So the point I'm trying to make, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that it is a witch hunt, it's a victimization, and I really cannot comprehend why anybody would want to make allegations like this and not back them up with any, any evidence. Okay. Um, the question would be simple. Would you wish to respond to the allegations or not? I refer you to a case of Fox O'Doy versus the Attorney General, Constitutional Petition Number 54 of 2013, that the right to be heard is limited to the opportunity to be heard and where tribunal a very principal in Father Nansensio Begumisa and three others versus Eric Tiberanga, where the plaintiff appears that the defendant does not appear. In this case, you have appeared. So it is an option you would want to take. We can give you more time, but we have given you a, the opportunity to be heard, the opportunity to respond to the allegations in the minister's letter. Now the question is, are you ready to respond to these allegations or do you wish to proceed? It's probably a tricky question. It's probably a legal question uh, at this stage. Um, in the court of public opinion, I haven't been heard. <coughs> I haven't said anything. It's the first time I am making any comments about this matter. But certainly I would like to be heard because as I've said, these are allegations which have been in the public domain, but they haven't been put to me. So yes, I would like to be heard. Can we give you the opportunity tomorrow? You give us a convenient time. You would be able to prepare and come with a response to those issues you think uh, you need to clarify on in regards to the allegations so that in our report it can be captured whatever response you make in that regard and uh, say it so that you are given the right for everyone to right for you to be heard so what time would be opportune for you tomorrow can it be on monday because i would love to unfortunately it must be tomorrow Is uh, 4 okay for you? 4 p.m.? 4 p.m. is fine. Okay, tomorrow 4 p.m.? For just the allegations. For the allegations? No, for you can come and present everything. Oh, okay. Because I, 
I was ready to present. It uh, looks like a very large document. We would want you to incorporate the allegations as well. Yeah, uh, the defense in the regard to the allegations with your presentation. Honorable Masa. The chair I'm a bit worried tomorrow, 4 p.m. could act just like today and will end up in the same circumstances, given that we are meeting finance still tomorrow at 3. Finance and is coming to respond to a few issues. I honestly believe that if I'm giving the opportunity now to make my presentation, then I can come back tomorrow at 4 to speak specifically to the allegations and if you permit then I, I can also speak to the questions because I think the is, the is the presentation this large document? No, no, these are just documentations. The presentation Can you have a look at your presentation? Yes, it is. It is exactly, yes, it's exactly 10 pages, but it is summarized. It will be smooth. Trust me. Yes, Mr. it is Chair. summarized, but it refers to annexes. Which are these ones? Which would need time to internalize. Which is uh, why I was suggesting that if I go through that and then give you the annexes, then you can look at the material. Since it is a then, short presentation, why don't you leave us with these documents? We look through the annexes so that tomorrow it's even faster for you to go through the document when we already understand. Now, going through the document when we can't internalize these annexes right now. The annexes are all together. So yes, but we'll need to look at them before. It will, will not be proceeding right Okay. Chair, I think you're guiding well. A lot, because we're exhausted, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's why we think if you gave us your presentation and the annexes, and the annexes yeah. then we would go after resting for an hour or two, then go through. So that tomorrow when you come, we are able to peruse through very fast, okay. like the chair is guiding. Thank That's fine. Do we have any contra review? No. Mr. Yargawa, we thank you kindly. Leave your. No, I, can I do the distribution myself? Because yes. I would like to be very specific, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I hope that is not a method of corrupting members. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate the personal touch. Summarize this in less than 20 minutes. We already concluded on that part. And we agreed that this document you wanted to summarize is very brief. You can do it in less than 10 minutes. But he's referring to annexes, which you must look at in his presentation. Mr. Chair, yes, uh, I'd also come with a flip chart. I'm looking for a stand, and I would like, I would love 
that you allow me to just draw something so that it compounds my presentation just for you to understand. Are we now going to do a presentation? No, it is going to take five minutes of a flip chart. Unfortunately, I can't see a stand. So I'm disadvantaged already, but I'll try and make it as quick as possible. Presentation. Let us read. We'll, you'll do all these things tomorrow. You have nothing to worry about. If I did this, your reading would be fantastic. <laughs> okay. Pass no time. <laughs> This will be the most important thing. Yeah, I'm very confident. This is the fund. Because a lot of people have not understood what the fund is. Just remove that chair. Yes, I have So, this is the fund. The fund receives contributions from members. And employees of five percent and ten percent. It gets in the in the big pot and it gets invested out in three places. Because you'll hear a lot of jargon in my presentation tomorrow, but it's so important to understand why that is so important. The first is what we call fixed income. You'll see it in the notes at the very beginning. The second is equities, and the third is alternative assets, but in our particular case, it is mostly real estate. We then earn income out of that, and we spend at least 1.1% of our Assets under management, a very, a very, a very, uh, a very good statistic because it compares with the rest of the funds in the rest of the world. We use that for administration. Whatever else is then left out of the income we fund, that's your income or revenue. That is all paid back to the member as interest. So when we declared last year 9.65%, you add that 9.61%, you add the 1%, you then add then the 0.3% for tax that we pay, and then you get the gross income that we receive on this other side. Now, when the money hits, the account of the member, then the member can withdraw from the scheme through seven ways. Very important. The first is on your age benefit. The second one is on your withdrawal benefit. That is at the age of 50, you can withdraw from the scheme. And then midterm access, you all know about it, 45 within 40 and then 10 years. No, <laughs> 45 years and saving for 10 years. Yes. And then you get 20%. Then you've got an invalidity benefit, which is your sick. Uh, survivor's benefit, the one you don't like when you die. Immigration grant is when you migrate. And then finally, so that is how you exit.
That is how you enter. That's how the investment happens. And that's what happens with the, not the investment, the administration. So this is the administration. This is the investment. This is the collections. And this is the benefits. This is our business model. Now, it's so important to note this because this was before the introduction of voluntary contributions, which the law has brought in. It will be a big subject in the talk tomorrow when we are examining the six billion shillings that you've all famously had. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> We are going to start at 3, not 4, as Ali has stated. Because we already had we have scheduled meetings. We have the Attorney General in the morning. We have the Law Society. We, have, we are now going to adjust the Auditor General to morning. And he needs time to prepare the defense, so he can't come in the morning. So he'll be, Mr. Riyagawa, we shall be expecting you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Finance will be here tomorrow at 2 p.m. And not 3 p.m. as earlier stated. Otherwise, we thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. So we have to leave.